For the past few years, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant, and Carl Pilkington have been meeting regularly for a series of pointless conversations. Okay. This is one of them. Testing. Is that all right? Hello, and welcome to The Ricky Gervais Show. With me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello. And the little round-headed buffoon, that is, Carl Pilkington. All right. Carl, I've got a couple of little facts for you, just to try and in inflame your imagination. Go on. Sharks are immune to cancer. Are they? Yeah. So what... How have they found that out? Well, I don't know, but... But I've, I've never heard of any fish having cancer, though. I haven't heard of a, a cod being ill. <laughs> so why are we focusing on that one? Okay. Stroking a spider can cause its hair to fall out. <gasps> what? Because it's it doesn't like it and it gets stressed out, or is it just that some people are rubbing too hard? No, I don't think it's they're rubbing too hard. I think it's something to do with. It, it, I mean, what sort of maniac is stroking a spider anyway? My mum did it once. Really? Yeah, not, not to a spider. No. It was uh, just a little bee. <laughs> She'd been out um, sunny day and that. Uh, got the washing off the washing line. Yeah. She was bringing it in. Little bee sat on the top of like the bed sheet or whatever it was. Yeah. And um, she's in the kitchen with it. And she goes, "Look at that little bee there." She started sort of stroking its stroking its head. It loved it. <laughs> <laughs> How did it make it clear that it loved it? Well, it wasn't. It wasn't struggling. It was just sat there like because it must have been like a bit dozy. They get a bit dozy, don't they, in the uh, in the heat and that. Yeah. And uh, it just stayed there on the sheet, and she sort of strokes its head for a bit. And she had to put it out. It didn't go out. It didn't try and escape. It was like, you've had enough now. Uh, <laughs> that was that. Was that. She sent it out. <laughs> she loved all that. She loved little flies and stuff. And we had our really house fly. What? She said, our really house fly. What do you mean? It's just a fly that always seems to knock about in one corner of the room. Right, it's the same fly, was it? Yeah, it was the same fly. How do you know it was the same fly? So whenever she saw a fly, she went, oh, look, it's back. Well, it's, we weren't letting him in. It's just that it stayed in. Carl, what makes you think it was a pet house fly as opposed to a different fly every day? Because it was always in the same place in the corner. But it could have been that something about that, that particular place that attracted flies rather than it was the same fly. Well, I'm never worried about it. It's not. It wasn't harming us. It's just. It just always hung about. But how do you know it was the same fly? How do you recognise it? We weren't worried about it. It, does, it doesn't matter, does it? If, if like we're thinking another fly is getting a bit of free rent or something, just, no, just let it let it stay. I don't understand what. But why, why no? Well, no, I d right. Okay, you're in the house, right? There's flies. Okay, not flies, fly. What? Why do you think it was the same fly for all those years? Just because we haven't got loads of other flies. At no point was there a crossover period where there's two, and it's like, hang on a minute, he's trying it on here. <laughs> That's what I mean. It was always just one on its own. <laughs> and we just thought, leave it, it's all right. I don't know why... Why are you suspicious? Why do you always think someone's out to do you? <laughs> no, 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 I don't know why you assumed when you see a fly every now and again that it's exactly the same fly. It the just fact was. That it's Harry. The one in our house was the same one. How do you know? <laughs> well, all right, I don't, but I, at no point did I feel suspicious. <laughs> Speaking of flies, though, and that... Um, They've, they've got one, right? I was out with Ricky, right, and he was reading the paper. There was a story there about a fly that its eyesight was bad or something, and they've made it a pair of glasses, and it had a picture of a house fly wearing... OK, this is this is incredible, glasses. Steve. Can I, can I take over? Hang on, let me just just need to finish a couple of questions for that. So he's got... There's a small fly, and they've made it a pair of glasses... Yeah. ..so that it can see better. Yeah. And your concern is what? Well, again, it's just that thing of... We're looking after everything now, aren't Sorry, we? I've got to come in here, Steve. All right. I showed you, you the story. Saw it. You saw it. It was a picture of a, a house fly with a pair of glasses, glasses on. Right? Yep. right? It was about a one-sentence thing. Mm. It was about how far technology's come. Yeah. And, and a group of scientists out. using um, microscopy, right, and uh, um, uh, laser tools had 
as an exhibition, shown that they could make a pair of glasses smaller to fit on a hard. They put it on there and they've taken a picture of it and it's on as a display. At no point was it actually, because the fly had bad eyesight, the fly was presumably dead, it was purely an art installation or a show of technology. I thought you were going to say, Rick, that you drawn the uh, glasses on there <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and he believed it like, there's a bearded lady in this paper. <laughs> no. Yeah. My, God, my God, Tony Blair looks like Adolf Hitler. No. <laughs> what, what do you think of that, though? But they did it as an experiment. Out. Yeah, but all things start as an experiment. But why would they make a pair of glasses but for a fly? How, how would they know he had short, a bad eyesight? How would they know it was the same fly? Bumping into stuff. I don't know. Bumping into stuff. It's just, it's just that thing, innit, of human nature is something's wrong with something, let's fix it. And they, and they try and help people out all the time, don't they? When no. you, you know, We are, we're always doing it. We're always trying to help people out. Instead of just going, you've been dealt a duff card. Cope with it. <laughs> Came up with a good idea. We'll um, be the judge of that. Mm. Uh, well, I, I do it now. <laughs> it's not a good idea. Okay. Okay. I, I'm, I'm, I, I'm sticking my neck out here. Um, but yeah. uh, I right. think this isn't going to be a good idea. Okay. Thoughts? Well, I'm, I'm going to agree with you. I'm going to second that motion. Okay. Let's see. Let's see if we're, let's see if we're both right. See through skin. <laughs> <laughs> High five, Rick. <laughs> We've had a few emails about the old shows. People came into them late in the season. Did I not tell you this? We we've had an e we had an email from an Inuit. Really? Yeah, yeah. I thought I'd mentioned this. Have we not mentioned this before? No. No, it was an email from a guy who said, uh, I think. Well, I don't think he lives. He lives in Canada, I think, or somewhere else. I apologise for if I'm getting that wrong. But I think he told, he said he was half Inuit and he listens to the show. Half Inuit. Mm. See, that's interesting because I think I mean, it was so remote. I know I'm probably wrong now, but I think that those are so remote that I can't think where they're meeting people who aren't. <laughs> that are also Inuit. Inuit, yeah. Oh, and who's going, you know, other societies are going, I'll tell you what, I'm fed up, there's no action here, I'm going to the frozen tundra, I'm about to be someone there. <laughs> yeah. Where do they meet? Do they do online dating? What, what, Probably a lot of online stuff. What do you put as hobbies? Fishing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Skinning stuff. <laughs> Skinning stuff, yeah. What else stuff to skin? Oh, uh, you know, seals. Seals, yeah, sure. That's about it, isn't it? Why are they hanging about round there? <laughs> <laughs> Why are seals going, do you know what, it's cold, I'm sick of it here. It's windy all the time, what have you, and I'm getting a club on the head. <laughs> Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Because they're, they're meant to be quite bright in terms of animals and that, aren't they? Yeah. So why are they knocking about them parts? I don't know. Say, like, if, if seals died out, right, would 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 that be a problem? We've done this. We've been through this before, Carl. Everything has a knock-on effect. Even a seal? That's sort of in between something already. It's between a fish and a... <laughs> and, and a, a dog, dog <laughs> isn't it? I knew you were going to say dog. <laughs> it's not between a fish and a dog. What do you think evolution does? Do you, just, fish to I'll dog. Never understand it. Maybe what do you mean it's between a fish and a dog? I'm just saying it's. It was a perfectly evolved mammal that re-entered the the water, I imagine, and then got streamlined. And it, I, I mean, it's between a fish and a dog. But why not have one and the other? Why not have like you know you've got a dog, you've got a fish. No, it's not between a fish and a dog. It's not between a fish and a dog. I don't know what between means. Well, I don't know what... This I... is it again about saving everything all the time. What is it doing? <laughs> What's it doing? Everyone's feeling sorry for him all the time. Save the seal and all that. What's it doing? Why are we saving it? <laughs> Let's just ask that question. What's it doing? <laughs> I don't know what to say. It's between a fish and a dog. Out of all the people in the world to have a chat with, do you know, um... What's his face? That German doctor. Which one? The guy that, that displays the human body? Guns, someone. Guns right. Traven or something. All oh, right, yeah. Um, well, I don't... Is he, is he a proper doctor? Because it's just that it's always... I mean, I could cut a body up. I never see him sort of put it back together. Is, <laughs> is anyone keeping an eye on him, sort of going, well, who is he, actually? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he is a proper doctor. I mean, he doesn't, he doesn't answer everything. Like, he doesn't say, I, I don't understand why the intestines have to be that long. I don't, I don't know why it just can't go from the throat to the belly. Exit, straight dark line down, out the arse. You must know. Well, no, because uh, the, the way he, he dragged it out and it was, like, miles long. Yeah. Pointless. No, it's not pointless. It's just, just, have a, just have a straight... Do you know no, what I mean? Straight. it's what you're talking about. Again, the evolution sort of worked this out for us. It really works. I don't think you're going to improve on it. What I mean is that's probably that long because years ago they were eating dinosaur and that might have took a lot of indigestion or something. I don't know how, how chewy it was. It might have been quite fatty. 
dinosaur meat and it needs to go through all that. Now, we're eating like yogurt. <laughs> so, I mean, <laughs> we, we, don't, we don't need anything that, you know, is, is, is doing that much work anymore. All the food is mashed up. And in aura, right? <laughs> all her food is mashed. <laughs> right? She doesn't have to chew anymore. She's got teeth, but she doesn't need them. And that's how. how <laughs> She's got teeth, but she do not need them. No, but that's well, how we're she moving. Well, she intestines removed then. Well, no, but this is that what would I'm sort saying. our other problem, wouldn't it? We're changing everything all the time, aren't we? I mean, there's some fella who was looking at on the internet. Um, identical twins, right? They were sort of sick of looking like each other, so they were like, "What can we do?" Right? And one of the twins said. You have my arm, right? <laughs> and he, he had his arm taken off and stuck on his, his twin, so his twin's got, like, three arms. No, it's not true. <laughs> it's on the website. <laughs> no, it's not what? true. Um, what, for a laugh? They were born so what, they did that for no, a laugh. What, like, what doctors doing this, then? Well, they're old enough to sort of say, this is what we want. And no, 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 no. Doctors don't go, well, if he wants another arm, and I'll take another... They don't... Doctors don't do that. What sort of practice is this doctor going around and go, Dr. Jekyll? I mean, Carl, think of what you're no, saying. But we, Where would he have stopped? Can you put his head on my knee? No, it's up to you. <laughs> no, sign you're this. Paying. If you sign this, you can give my consent. <sighs> but, but we, you know, it isn't. Oh, what, what do you think these doctors are doing? Just they do as they're told. They don't do as they're told. They do if someone wants it. And, and twins, sort of, it can get you down, can't it? Being a twin, cos it's like... Sorry, what would this solve, though? I thought you said he, he, he gave one of them a, a bigger nose or a beard or two front teeth that were to make them look different, right? Not... I'll tell you what we could do. Go on. Um, would you like one arm? Go on, what are you thinking? Well, me three, you one, therefore not twins. <laughs> Novelty. I mean, you are a mental man. But they can do it now, can't they? There's no sort of... There's, there's no line drawn anymore. They don't go, you're crazy, we're not going to do that. Yeah, in Saw 2... Not in the real world. No, they don't do things like all this. Right, there's another bloke, right? I don't know the sort of full ins and outs of it. Go on, you surprised me. But <laughs> what he asked for, um, something happened to his his, his tackle. Right? Mm -hmm. His penis. Uh, yeah, right. Um, so he was at the doctor's and they were like, oh, what can you do for me? It's a bit embarrassing, I've got nothing down there. Right. <laughs> so they were like looking at it going, yeah. Um, Doctor, I don't know if he started like rubbing his chin with his finger or something. Looked down, he's thinking, <laughs> got an idea. Um, you know, you've got a lot of fingers. How many of them do you use? The patient's like, yeah, I see what you're thinking. <laughs> they cut off one of his fingers, sewn that on to where his, his tackle is. He's happy. Well, that's different though, isn't it? Well, That's where they've really taken different. tissue. <laughs> no, but they've. I assume they they fashioned it into more of a knob than a finger. If you were doing that, use a sausage. I mean, why lose a finger? For well, I'll tell you why. Because your finger has your your tissue, your blood type, and therefore would graft uh, to near your testicles. A sausage is a thing <laughs> that's made by a butcher out of offal, okay, that really can't be grafted onto any part of the human yeah, body. But... That's why they very rarely use any meat products yeah, but in, uh, in, in surgery. surgery. <laughs> I know, yeah. Use, well, I mean, why not use a sausage? You're a mental case. I always remember this story when I was a kid about some bloke. He had um, throat cancer, right? And his doctor said, carry on with your life, right? It's not going to be that good, but just carry on. Um, but don't eat meat. And he was like, oh, I love meat. He's like, yeah, but just don't, you know, have your veg, keep yourself strong, but don't be eating that. Anyway, he was, he was fed up because he loved his meat and his, his wife was feeling a bit sorry for him one day. And thought, you know, I'm sick of him looking fed up and that. Oh, he wants you some meat, for God's sake. Give him some meat. So she goes to the butchers, gets him a big piece of, like, steak and what have you. He can't believe it. He's like, oh, brilliant, cheers for that. Anyway, um, <laughs> he's got the meat on his plate, just about to tuck in, and the cancer comes out <laughs> from his throat. <laughs> what? No, it's some, I know, it sounds really weird, but it's something that, that I was told about years ago when I was Don't... growing up. What are you talking about? It was just some some bad illness, some cancer thing, and it sort of it was it was coming out, waiting for the meat. It was it was, <laughs> it was sort of dying again. It, I get a lot of your medical uh, knowledge is from it's uh, from the film Alien. So this guy with throat cancer, okay, yeah. as opposed to it being a disease of the cell, it was like a living the alien. It oh, was alien. so it was a, it was a, uh, it was the animal. It was the little animal cancer. That's why what he wasn't allowed to eat about? meat. He wasn't allowed to eat meat. So it's sitting there. So it's actually sitting there and throat. Well, I'll tell you what I'd have done if I'd have had 
at some cancer in my father. I go, <coughs> there you go. Rid of that. What are you talking about? So what happened? Um, <coughs> it choked to death on this thing, and the wife was like, oh, I shouldn't have given him the meat after all. Just That's listen a bollock to your, story. It's, it's all, there's loads of weird stuff like that there that is. happens in medical stuff. Well, the terrible thing is, you, if you if you got testicular cancer and you eat meat, your bollocks come out of your trousers and they're, they're all over the plate. Yeah. And you have to be asked to leave the restaurant. Oh, Jim Party, that is only gonna bring it down the That's the jingle for Carl's Diary, uh, excerpts of which we read each week. Get straight into it. A band from the Conga have won the best newcomers in a Radio 3 competition. They use pots and pans for instruments. It says that the conga is a poor, sad place. So why do people do that happy dance at the end of parties called the conga? Right, one is the Congo. <laughs> There's no place called the conga. <laughs> they come from a place called the Congo. <laughs> <laughs> conga! Fucking hell, you're such a... Met Suzanne at Euston Station. I said I would sort out the tea tonight, so I called the curry house. The fella couldn't understand me. I asked for two poppadoms. He kept saying, how many? I kept saying two. He still couldn't understand. I said one more than one. He understood. When we picked up the food and took it home, there were five poppadoms in the bag. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, 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 God. There is a restaurant somewhere that sells knobs to eat. No, there's not. <laughs> There is. No, there's not. No, there is. It says that women can't eat too many of them, and if you want a seal's knob for dinner, you have to book in advance. Right, it's gobbledygook. This is the ramblings of a madman again. It's a trend, he writes. It won't last long. It'll be like hummus. <laughs> <laughs> Called Ricky and asked what the difference is between the mind and the brain. Yeah, he did. <laughs> That's a hell of a phone yeah, call Yeah, unbelievable. <laughs> unbelievable. Ricky did explain, but I can't remember what he said. I wondered at what age you are when the mind kicks in. OK. Ricky changed the subject and said there is an island called Spider Island. There's nothing but spiders on it. A bloke went to visit the island and said there was a thousand types of spider in one tree. What do you think about that? What do you think of an island that's just full of spiders? Um, I don't know, because y you need spiders. I, I don't know what they do, but they say a world without spiders, like, wouldn't, wouldn't be good. But, but they sort of do, they do something. There's something about if you did get rid of them all... It would have an effect. Well, of course it would. Any get rid of anything, it would have an effect. Mm, not not everything though. <laughs> like I've said, you know, jellyfish and what have you. Well, it, no. It's it's ninety seven percent water or something. Yeah. So how much are they doing? Just g give them another three percent, make them water. <laughs> and that's, that's that's more useful. <laughs> give them another three percent and make them water. Oh God. Went into the gadget shop today. It's full of stuff that we don't need. Gadget used to be a good word that made you think of James Bond with all his gadgets. The best thing I could find in the shop was a clock that ran on potatoes. <laughs> we are definitely going backwards. <laughs> I agree. Well, what's the... who cares about that? A, a, you know, a little electrical impulse, so what? Had a night out with old schoolmate. Found out about more of the other lads I went to school with. One is living underground. <laughs> Underground, not like a mole. Do you yeah. mean he's got a basement, or do you mean he digs a hole every night? My mate went to visit him, and he said it's all. Like it had been raining really heavily, and that, and it's all the rain's running. What in. do you mean he went to visit him? He went down here. What's that? That's an hole in the ground. Yeah, come in. Come he, just, he just said, "Oh, come, come round to us," and he's, he's living underground. What do you mean he's living he, he, underground? He's happy down there. He said it was really muddy and what have you. He said he won't be going back to visit him. I believe this though. I believe someone he went to school with now lives in a hole. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't shock me. That's to that's you spent to far too long with him. If that now you're just happy to accept, I totally accept that. I I'd be surprised if I walked round uh, where he lived that there weren't more people living in holes. <laughs> his dad wanted to throw his budgie on the fire. True. His budgie died. His dad said, "Let's throw it on the fire." I mean, his mum. What did your mum do? She just was worried about the other bird that was left, so she made it a bit of company by getting a rock. Getting a feather off the dead bud, you sticking it on the rock, put, putting it in the cage. So, a Bit man living in a hole is not, not that bizarre. Right, carry on. Watched <laughs> a film about Hitler. Didn't watch all of it as it was subtitled. Can't be doing with that. Asked Suzanne if cinemas are full of deaf people when they're showing subtitled films. She said, shh, I'm trying to watch it. 
I say, what do you mean, shh? It's subtitled. I can make as much noise as I want. Yeah. She's you, a lucky, lucky woman. <laughs> you must be a joy to watch a subtitle film. I mean, the concentration is, is, is up there already. It's not as easy as when you're hearing it, because, mm. you, you know, you, you read things, but, you know, it's possible. If you had a, a buffoon going, I'm just going to sit here and make as much noise as I want, what's the point of that? <laughs> yeah. Do that in a cinema. Just walk into a subtitle film and go, right, everybody... Let's all do the Congo. We're having our bathroom done. The bathroom man was around at nine this morning. We weren't allowed to use the shower because it all had to be bone dry before we could use his waterproof filler. Not that waterproof, then. <laughs> Went for a brew with Ricky. We talked about monkeys and how they are closer to humans than they are to apes and how bees will drink cider to get off their heads. Now and again, there is a bee that lets the drinking get in the way of the work and other bees sting it to death. Blimey. Mm. Yeah, well, uh, uh, there are bees. They love a drink, um, and uh, they can they can just they they will uh, drink pure alcohol. They love getting off it, and they fall down and they're drunk, right? But some bees get uh, addicted in the, in the same sort of percentage as human addiction. Like ten percent of bees, they can't get enough of it. They take uh, ethanol, they take cider apples and that. And then when they get back to the hive, they go in a bit pissed, and they've got guard bees, and they go, "Come on, we've all had the drink." Bounces. Yeah. They sort of are, right? And they push them away, and they push them away again. Then the next time they go, right, I've had enough. And they give it a good idea. And uh, Carl couldn't get over this. I saw his face, but I, I knew that he was thinking of that bee with sort of, like, eyes rolling around his head, a little bit belligerent with his jacket on backwards. Yeah. You know, and the bouncer going, come on, come on, son, we've all had enough. Let's move away, <laughs> yeah. move away. You're not coming in, right? You're wearing trainers. Yeah, you know, you're wearing, you're wearing three pairs of trainers, <laughs> yeah. and uh, yeah. I, I'm, I'm sick of it. You know. But what I did find out, because I went, went home and went on the computer trying to find out about drunk bees knocking about, um, they're not actually meant to fly. It's only because they don't know. Fly. Well, no, but they're, they're, if, if they were told that you're not actually designed to fly, they, they wouldn't bother. No, th this, is the, this is that thing that goes around, that aerodynamically, on the, on the face of it, looking at the size of the wings and the, and the, and the body proportions and everything, that it, that it's a surprise that they can fly, OK? It's not that no-one's ever told them they can't, and as soon as someone tells me you're not meant to fly, they all fall out of the sky going, oh, what are we doing? Like in a cartoon. <laughs> no, but uh, it's, it's something about the confidence and that. At the moment, nobody's saying There's nothing to do with the confidence. There is no such thing as confidence in bees. A bee never loses his nerve. That's not why it drinks. Because what are you drinking for? I'm just not confident anymore. There's no point to turn to the bottle. I can't go up there again. You're an idiot. <laughs>